Well, hey, everybody. My name is Eric Waldrop with Your Next Step Leadership Coaching, and uh, I am excited about being here today with Michelle Whittabeen and Kreisha Waldrop, who is my wife. And we are talking about small business today, y'all. So, hey, thanks so much for being with me. Thank you for, Thank having, you us. for having us. Yeah. So um, the reason that I want to talk about small business today is because you guys have done a fantastic job at your small business and you are celebrating, I think, what, you just crossed the 10 year mark a few months ago, right? Yes. 10 months in, I mean, 10 years in October. Yeah. That's Not amazing. Months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Made it 10 months. Woo. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Woo. yeah. hey, so, so tell folks a little bit about uh, Jane Made and Found and, uh, and, and uh, all about your business. Okay. I'll let you tell that because you're really good at describing us. Uh, well, uh, so we started out um, as a holiday shop. Um, we got a very temporary business license mm -hmm. yes. and we had five artists and they wanted to sell stuff for the holidays and we planned to close on December 31st of 2010. And here we are in 2021, still going strong. Um, so it has become an artist loft uh, where we house about 15 local artists on in any given period of time. But then we also supplement the handmade, found, and vintage and upcycle goods with things that we just feel like are, um, I don't know, equivalent in spirit to those mm -hmm. things. Uh, we have a boutique section of the store. We have um, home gift furnishings, that kind of thing. So it's, um, it's expanded quite a bit over the years. Yeah. Everything that's in Jane Made and Found is something that Cresha and I would personally put in our homes. Right. Like when we're out shopping, we buy it because we like it. So that is yes. what Jane, Jane Made and Found, we've always joked, but it's like, if 13 women, you know, had one brain, this is what it would look like. So, right. And that's, that's what the store actually looks like. Cause people think when they walk in that it's just me and her, right. but it's actually all these other vendors and we've curated it to look like it's just, you know, a, it's single, just space. a single space. Yes. That's what we're good at. Yeah. That's really cool. We're also humble. <laughs> She's the <laughs> humble one and I'm not. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so what's what's interesting to me is you guys have made it over se uh, 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 ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, tw only twenty five percent of small businesses make it fifteen years. What do you guys feel like has been the secret for y'all in terms of being successful? Well, we were just talking about this the other day. Um, I think our mindset when we started. Um, I come from a heavy retail background. Bath and Body Works at Ann Taylor Loft, and that's about 12 years combined with both of them as managers for all different stores. And so when we met, you know, yes, it was five women that were creating, but I just remember telling Grisha, you know, let's run this like a big business. How would a big business do this? They're going to have daily goals. You know, we're going to look at the average dollar sale. We're going to look at the transactions. And for me, because that's, I'm the financial person. Um, that is one reason I think we're successful because we didn't think small. We didn't think about, oh, this is fun to sell. We were like, how can we get more clients in the door? How can we increase what we're selling? Mm -hmm. And so we just, we have a daily goal. We have a monthly and a yearly goal. And every year has always increased, not to toot our own horn, but we've always, we've always gone up, watch 2021, we're like, Rrr. but um, <laughs> But so we, every year we've always increased. And I, I do think we're successful because we've really challenged ourselves to act like, have that big business model with just your small hometown store. Yes. What do I you think? Um, I think we have um, changed before we had to. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's been part of the reason why we increase each year. Um, you know, we started in a, era of small business where everyone was we 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 came in a little before the curve honestly mm -hmm. yeah. um there were not any stores like ours when we started about a year after we started mm -hmm. there were a million stores like ours and what we wanted to do was be something different at that mm -hmm. point and so 
um, there were a lot of, you know, uh, people who were beginning to upcycle and jump on the thrift train and, you know, all those things. And so we just began to supplement with product that we really loved um, and just tried to adapt. Michelle's really great at forecasting. Um, I was telling her the other day, I said, you know, in, in 2009, if you had said, what is the Pantone color of the year? I would have said, what? Um, because that, that, that was not familiar terminology to me. Um, so she's very good at watching trends. She's very good at, you know, just like whatever stylistically is coming um, or has already landed in Europe, she's trying to figure out at what point we should integrate it. And so that's been really helpful. But I think changing before we've had to has been key for us. Um, as, as we've, you know, gone through the years, the store in 2010 is almost unrecognizable mm -hmm. to it the is. store yes. in 2021. Mm -hmm. So I had been told um, in retail back in the day when they were training us that our area that we're located in, we are always going to be two years behind of what you might see in the city. So, and I think one thing that we're always, when I say city, I mean yeah. like New York, the big right. city. Um, yes. So we're always, we don't want to be two years behind. We want to be right there with them or at least maybe six months behind. Um, but I think that's one reason that we've always, because you can come into our store and like our clients that might be from California, New York, the big city, they always say, I feel right at home. So I think that's really helped us. Yes. So, so what gives y'all joy in your business? Gosh, you just go yeah. straight for those hard hitting <laughs> questions, don't you, baby? Um, <laughs> I think there are a lot of things mm -hmm. that give us joy. Go, okay. go ahead. Um, I think like, I love, I love what we create together. Um, oh. That's probably the most fun thing that we yeah. do. Just our floor sets, just bouncing off ideas, just coming up with new product. Um, but I, I love to, when we're looking at our numbers, <laughs> they're just every month, we're just hanging <laughs> on financially. Let's be for real here. So we do, I, I get, I get happy just going, oh my gosh, every year we're, you know, we're attracting new people. I mean, Krisha does a great job on our social media. People come in because of that. So just the foot traffic increasing, the average dollar sale increasing, that makes me happy. And when those people actually walk into the store, what they say, the looks on their faces that they go, I can't believe this is, this right. is here. That, that blows us away. Yeah. And, and we just have fun together. I mean, it's an excuse for us just to hang out and have lunch. And so we don't, we don't care about the store. No, we love it, but we love just hanging out together. So that brings us joy. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Very but, true. You know. uh, yeah. I think anytime we can, um, you know, I, I learned a phrase a long time ago, um, in like when I had home businesses, it was what brings your client surprise and delight. And when we see somebody walk in the front door of Jane, you can see it on yes. their face. If it connects with them, they're like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, with the first time in, like people are like, oh, this is here. Yeah. Oh, I just found home. You know, it's like all <laughs> these things. And, um, and so that definitely, um, we spend a lot of time setting the store, resetting the store, resetting the store again. Um, it's a constant thing that mm -hmm. we do. And I would say that's definitely one of the, the greatest joys that we have is creating those spaces where people come in and they go, this is where I want to come mm -hmm. when I'm having a rough day. This is where I want to come to refuel. This is where I want to come to buy a gift for someone because I know I'm going to find something special. So I think all those things mm -hmm. have given us a lot of joy. Yeah. And it is funny just to add on one last little thing about that. We, when we're doing a floor set, we always say, always, oh my gosh, this, this looks so good. Can we ever, right. I'm going to yeah. not be can, it, can this get any better? And then we're like, oh my gosh, we just, this one's better it's than the last better. one. Look at this. So That's yeah, that awesome. is, that brings us so much. The fact that we can finish a floor set and we are so proud of it. We cannot wait yeah. to show our husbands. We can't wait to show our family and the vendors what we have, the space that we're selling their wares, because we want them to just be as excited as we are. Yeah. So, and the clients too. Yeah. What, what you guys are really good at and what you're, what I assume you're talking about in terms of floor set, if people don't know mm -hmm. what that means, is really yes. creating an environment in your store mm -hmm. for how you not only showcase your product, but creating an environment 
people want to come to, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's yeah. Cool. And that's really, I think that's so key um, in the small business is one of the things I love and, and we do this so often is we'll go and find, you know, uh, we'll find somebody on Instagram that's close, you know, drivable distance and we'll go to their store and see their space. And it's always so cool because someone who has the same square footage as us and maybe a similar vision has a completely different, different look. look and feel. And every single small business owner's space reflects something about who they are on the inside. And so that's always just so cool to see that you're never going to see the exact same thing twice in a small business. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's one of the most beautiful parts of it of supporting that's small cool. businesses is you are really buying into someone's personality, their vibe, their whole, you know, it's think of it in terms of, and if you're a small business owner watching this, then you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It is a home away from home and you're, creating a space you want to live in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what people buy into when they come to the store. Yes. Yeah, so. I like that. All right. So what I think people are probably wanting to know <clears throat> is how have you guys managed the tension of not only being friends, but business partners? Because there's the old phrase of, you know, it's, it, it, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> you know, the, the, <laughs> There's the old phrase of like, if you're a business partner, it's only going to, you know, be a matter of time till you're not business partners anymore. But how right. do you guys manage that? Well, I think because one, one thing I've learned from Cresha from the very beginning is, you know, and she was even specific about like, we would talk about it, but this relationship, our friendship is way more important than Jane. Like we love Jane. We love what we create, but us two together, like that is always going to be the most important. And we've always tried to keep that just, uh, I'm trying to think of the words. We've always tried to protect it just as much as we would our own, our own marriage, um, right. our own family. We've tried to create, um, protect that friendship. So right. whether it's social media, yeah, that's like, huge. Yeah. There are big boundaries mm -hmm. around our, our friendship mm -hmm. and our business partnership there are some of the things that we don't do we've never even talked about the fact that we don't do them like if we have issues with each other mm -hmm. most likely no one else is ever going to know that yes um because it stays very contained mm -hmm. in between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, so to go and talk about that on <laughs> social media or with clients or with really that, that much has of never happened. <laughs> it just <laughs> hasn't happened because yeah. you're not going right. to survive that. Yeah. Because yes. right. you know, yeah, definitely. Right. So. Yes. All right. So, so that, that's a great example. Like what are, what are a few other expectations, mm -hmm. for instance, a few other expectations that you, that, that you feel like as a business partner, you have of one another? Um, you know, I think, I don't know that I would jump straight to the word expectations, but for us, one of the things that's happened naturally, um, and, and just to preface this, mm -hmm. we became best friends while we were running Jane. our business. Yes. Mm -hmm. We knew each other before mm -hmm. then, and we knew each other in the context of trust. Like we knew enough about one another mm -hmm. to have a healthy trust of each other. We knew kind of what our marriage least, relationships yeah. were, yeah. what our faith foundations mm -hmm. were, what our, um, family you know, life family life was yeah. like, yeah, all those things. So we had that piece of it, but mm -hmm. we didn't know each other on a super personal level. And so as we have built Jane, that is the friendship has cultivated through that. And I think one of the things that has come through, you don't spend 10 years with mm -hmm. anyone without seeing their crazy up close and personal. <laughs> and we have seen yes. each, each other's, other's crazy. crazy. Yes. And <laughs> I but think y'all don't get to yeah, see it. Exactly. We, we can't share that <laughs> yes. with you. It's just for us. Yeah. Um, but I think one of the things that's helped us is when one or the other of us has gone through a hard time, mm -hmm. it's an 
instinct, instinct almost yes. that the other one picks up immediately the ball yeah and runs whether it, yeah at work right. I mean like because we've talked about like if we come together our partnership is so we really do have the same brain yeah. and our partnership is so connected that if we're about to start a floor set and say one of us came up with the ideas last time and then this time you know, she might say, Hey, Michelle, what are you thinking? And I'm just like, I have no ideas right now. This is where I am in life. And she'll just say, you know, well, I liked what I saw that you pinned or your Instagram. Let's talk about that. And then we'll just pull ideas together when we get in a room together and it's just generating ideas. Yeah. I mean, it is. It's, it's gold. Yeah, yeah. it's gold. <laughs> it, it really is. is. And it, it, I think that it's it, instinct just mm -hmm. kind of tells us who needs mm -hmm. to lead in what moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that that's not really transferable if you're running a business to go, oh, instinct. Mm -hmm. But I think there's something to be said of having a partnership that um, allows instinct to lead. And if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's really good. So what I heard you say was, you know, when you guys came together, you had the same value system. Mm -hmm. um, it it right. was just that friendship wasn't quite developed. The other thing I heard you say was, um, it's more than a 50, 50 relationship. Yeah, mm -hmm, um, definitely. Because when one of you's kind of maybe, maybe in a tough mm -hmm. place or dealing with something, the other one kind of what I heard you say, Michelle kind of mm -hmm. kicks in and kind of takes over yes. and that kind of thing. And we so, have always done, we really are the yin to the, I right, mean, we a, have <laughs> always done that. I mean, it's just, we don't even have to say, I need right. your help. The other one just, Hey, let me, let me do this or, you know, and, and I've loved that in our business relationship, we have always like, even when we're out buying the smallest things, we text each other. Do yeah. you like this? Is this okay if I buy this? Like we're just, you know, because that we joke, you know, it's a marriage, but marriage is a lot of, a lot of marriages, you know, argue over money. We don't, but it, that's just something we're always working with is money and, you know, right. get, you know, and so, but we, we're just always communicating. We really do text 24 seven. I yeah. know our husbands <laughs> are, you know, that, but we really yeah. do. We're not telling you something yeah. new that yes. you didn't yeah. know. Yeah. We talk all, all right. the time. Yep. Yeah. All right. So how are you guys debt free after 10 years running a business you know, you both have the same mentality regarding mm -hmm. finances and money because that's mm -hmm. the number one reason why businesses don't last. Um, right. So where did this mentality of wanting to be debt free in your business and your business model, especially, you know, where'd that come from? Um, I think, I feel like we have operated from on a most to least principle. Mm -hmm. Um meaning we want to have the most impact for the least amount of money. We want to have the most investment for the least amount of investment, if that makes sense. So in other words, what can you afford? Basically, mm -hmm. yes. it's like a, a basic principle of, of learning and earning as you are growing mm -hmm. up. And so uh, here's a great example. When we opened, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I am fixing to say this on a video. When we opened, we had our register, not for one year, not for two, but for five yeah. years, our register was a backward bookcase. Yes. We had flipped it around backward. It was nice and tall and people could walk up to it. And we had our cash box sitting on it and our little iPad and that was our register. Yes. And uh, so that's an example of this was a resource we had. We figured out how to make it work. And mm -hmm. we have done that the over whole time. And yes. over yeah. and over whether again. it's whether it's marketing, like we just we say we want to get this sign, but we're not going to go in debt for it. We'll pay for it, you know, when we can or, you know, we can't afford to pay ourselves. We're constantly in those first few years. It was just putting money back into our inventory, right. what else we could find. Yeah. Um, and we do know that we're, we tell everyone we are very lucky because our husbands work. We have work a real really job, hard. but you guys yes. work really hard and, and that helps us. <laughs> um, but at the same time, we just have always, we just never overspend. And that's just been right. awesome. 
you know, yeah, just and making, just finding stuff. It, you know, I love it because Chris will be like, I'm going to go in our supply closet and see what I can turn into cash. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> why don't we just buy it? But um, so I love that about us because we we do balance each other out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. but sure. yeah, I want to pay those bills every I've grown up always like paying my bills first and then living on what's left. Right. Right. And that's sort of what we do with Jane. So, and so I think that's that's been one of the things that has added charm mm -hmm. to the store. Um, I, I choose to find it charming that we, <laughs> we, have, we have been resourceful, yes. um, but like people will come in and they'll say, oh my gosh, this display is so cool. And, and you know, we're eyeballing each other going, ha ha, uh, cause we know that we used, you know, 17 things that we had in the supply closet mm -hmm. and figured out a way to mount them all together mm -hmm. to create right. something that no one else has because, you know, it. It was what was available to us without spending money. So, um, so yeah, we've been creative in places where um, creativity was not going to cost us. Like in other words, it it we've just used resources that we had to figure out how to meet a need that we had. Mm -hmm. so, That's really yeah. good. So, if if somebody's considering a partnership in their business if they're getting ready to start something or they want to bring on somebody to become a partner um, in, in a partnership kind of a situation like what you guys have got, what advice would you give them to think about before they do that? Um, I know that the way that we organically like became friends and became partners um, I mean, that right there was a blessing within itself because we just, this partnership grew organic. I mean, we right. just, we both like, like she's my fashion goals. She's, you know, <laughs> we look at each other like, oh, you know, they're just everything about each other. We're like, oh, um, but I, I can't imagine having, we've always joked, there's no third banana coming in here. I'm sorry. Yeah. So they're just later on in the thing. It just, it's it. not going to happen. Yeah. So yeah. we might have little vendors and stuff yes. like that, but right. it's just me and her. And I would never want to do a business like this on my own. There's just weight. I, I know that without her, her help, her ideas, she's got the energy that just sometimes keeps us moving forward. Um, I'd love that about a partnership. And if you can start yeah. it from the ground up, that. It's way better than starting it halfway through. So, yeah. because I think at, um, adding a partner in the middle mm -hmm. of a business or in the, you know, even after the conception of the business would be very difficult mm -hmm. because you do, it is blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, there's no pretty way to make it. It, it is a lot of grunt work. It's a lot of, um, you know, trying to figure out if the ends meet. It's constantly trying to outthink your last thought. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so to bring someone in after the fact of, of giving so much of mm -hmm. yourself um, is probably almost always going to be a mistake. Um, because the person who was there from the get-go is going to go, well, this is my baby and mm -hmm. you now want to give me input on my baby. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Um, yeah. And I think that that's one of the things that has been so cool is just from day one of, of having the store, um, you know, I, I remember Michelle, Michelle cleaning toilets the day before we opened, scrubbing the toilets as if because I know, was like, somebody I, is gonna want to use the bathroom, <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to look good for them. Right? Yeah, she was scrubbing. Now we don't let you use our bathroom. Seriously, <laughs> like it's a hundred-year-old building. She's in there. Shh, shh, shh. I was uh, proving yeah. myself that I would be a good partner, and they wanted me. There you go. <laughs> yes, for sure, yeah. for sure. And so, yeah, it I, like I think we would both heavily say partnership is great yes um because you need it <laughs> with the right person mm -hmm. and at the right time mm -hmm. um yeah. and it really does um it allows you to have the ebb and flow of a normal life without you know um feeling like every single thing depends on you yeah mm -hmm. and so i think and it's just so fun to bounce the ideas of off of each yes. other like when we go into a house i love it because i can't imagine being 
an interior designer all by myself and then just being like I hope this picture looks good right. but I love it because Chris will be like you know it's not our worst is that what it is it's not our worst it's or, not the worst it's not thing the ever. worst thing I've ever seen that I go mm. so we can do better yeah. but sometimes Michelle's like you said it's not the worst thing you've seen so exactly but that that just what keeps us I mean I think that's what keeps us in the forefront too because we're always right. Yeah, we are always pushing each other. We're always, yeah, just to have each other and that to give each other bounce off of each, as you can tell today, yeah. just yeah. to give us that energy that we need. I cannot imagine ever doing it by myself. I've always said I would never do if Christian moves, I'm out. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. all right. James so, yes. All right. So, you guys have a little bit of a unique business model. Explain, mm -hmm. ex explain to folks your model with your vendors and i want to ask you a follow-up question about your vendors and just as i got okay okay <laughs> vendors um, so ahead. our business model yeah. is sort of a it is a weird one yes. um and it again it probably wouldn't work um unless you are vetting the people who mm -hmm. are utilizing your space as vendors mm -hmm. um so well, the way it started, it's kind of like one of those how it started, how it's going kind mm -hmm. of deals. But the way it started was to vend at Jane, you had to work, had to at, work, Jane. work at the store. Yeah, just help us man it. Right. So like a co-op or something. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It was a co-op. And so um, that's how we started. And we ran it that way for four years. Yes. Four years. Um, and what we found over the course of those four years is that not everyone who is creative is also equipped to run a desk and a register. And it, it, that's no slam on yeah. the people who um, vended and worked there, but there were some people who absolutely loved it and some people who just- They're just terrified it, just to yeah. interact with other people because right. a lot of artists are very shy. And right, they're so, shy yeah. or they're also trying to create while they're waiting on mm -hmm. clients and that's just it's that's not yes. going to be a best case scenario mm -hmm. ever and so um we had some big changes that happened we moved into a different facility etc and so when we had that move we changed our structure because up to that point everyone was a booth rent type mm -hmm. vendor um and they worked as and and then kept their profits and so we changed our structure slightly um so that we still rented space per se but no vendor handles their own inventory um we handle all the vendor inventory so no one's responsible for their own setup or anything it is a true i'm going to leave this at the register you figure it out kind of scenario and we love that because yes. we we know how we want it to look mm -hmm. um with that change also and this was six years ago we um adapted our you know policy and if you wanted to work in the store and if we wanted you to work in the store um that was a benefit to you as a vendor financially in some other mm -hmm. ways but we have managed to go 10 years without having employees because the vendors help operate so they tend to take saturdays we operate during the week um, and it's worked out to be a great um, setup so far because most of those vendors have some kind of retail experience. Um, we have hired our first mm -hmm. official like employee ever uh, this year. Yes. And again, we do the, uh, you know, most people leave. <laughs> so, 10 years in. Yeah. All right. Finally got an employee. There you go. And now we're looking for, yeah. Yeah. And now we're looking for more. So, so, so how do you know? Uh, does that translate? Yeah. Does that yep. make sense? Mm -hmm. How do you know if somebody will okay. be a good vendor for Jane Maiden Found? How do you know if somebody will be a good vendor for you? Well, we are, we, we have the worst, what is it? Poker face. Yeah. And when, when we would be interviewing a, a vendor and we just were like, uh, can we buy this right now? Like during the interview, like, uh, we're just going to buy this right over this. Um, we knew we wanted them That's to be in the know. store because we're like, okay, if it's something that we want, we cannot wait then we know we will create around it so yeah. um and that's and we've learned that lesson if we want to buy it it is something we're going to make beautiful the space beautiful for it it's something we can sell because we love right. it we're passionate about it and we can sell it to our clients so and one of the 
the unique parts of, of the store is that um, not every vendor, every vendor has the opportunity to be as involved as they want. Um, and there are some vendors that we see maybe once a month maybe mm -hmm. um, when they drop off product and that is the level of involvement they want. And then there are other vendors that are there, you know, every other day um, because they just like to hang out and um, they want to, you know, see how their product's doing and they want to kind of get a feel for who the clients are and that kind of and stuff. And we love it. Yes. Yeah. And so we think that's fantastic. We love that. And, and really both extremes are needed mm -hmm. um, because if we had 50 Everyone. people hanging out at the store all the time it would get a little crowded um but it is it's cool just to see um how different makers and and i will say too the quality of our makers at this point is probably the highest it has ever been they're fantastic it's like department store quality mm -hmm. yes. i mean it's amazing you know it's like That's macy's cool. would carry yes, this yes. so yeah it's fantastic. we're very proud of yes, them we so, are yes so. go vendors yay yay all right so so what 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 are some changes that y'all have made working with customers since in, in these 10 years what are some ways that you've adjusted your style and your approach with we talked about this. We were uh, yes. going over these questions last night. Yes. Um, well, I can't remember <laughs> what we were saying about our. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> gosh, let's see. With our customers. I mean, we've, you know, everything from um, social media has been huge for yes. us. And that's for any business. So you are 24 seven now, what you're putting out there to the customers, you know, how you're you you want to respond to them right away because you don't want to look like, oh, you're not important. I'm not going to respond right. to you because really anybody that interacts with us, we want to, we want to right. let you know right. that just, yay. oh, yay, that makes us happy. They're talking to us. And um, so we do interact even more with our clients. Um, we've always been big with customer service. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to tell the story that with um, this is one thing thing I was when we would hire new vendors and we needed to train them um, when I worked at Bath and Body Works they had this whole background that there's this one employer her name is Kate and everyone wants to be like Kate and Kate's creating these fragrances at, you know in her garage and but the one thing they would always train you is Kate is hosting a party now if and you're the manager of the store if Kate invited all these people to her party and they walked in and you didn't say hey would you not be embarrassed that you didn't even talk to these people when they walked in your door and that's something I've always carried with me when you own your own store I'm like mm -hmm. don't you know every person that comes in wants to be acknowledged this is our house where uh, we invite them all the time come see us come see us and we want to make sure that they know Hey, we've invited you in. We want to make the most of this relationship. Even if you don't buy anything, you know, we want to just show you this is the environment. Um, so yeah, so that is one thing that I feel like we've always been very good about is our customer service. Yeah, we're the hostesses. Yes. Yeah, we're the hostesses <laughs> and we want them to feel comfortable yeah. when we come. We want everyone to feel comfortable. That's, that's our space. We want them not to feel like, ooh, I shouldn't be in here. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the worst. When a client apologizes because yeah. they want to take something off the mannequin, yeah. we're like, no, we yes. want you to yes. take that off the <laughs> mannequin. <laughs> Never apologize Please. for a second. Try not. <laughs> so I, I think, too, like over the years, um, our relationships with our customers, when clients turn into friends, friends yes that's mm -hmm. a that's a win for us it, it is i mean i'll get weepy talking yeah. about yeah, it so that's I won't, a, but like yeah that that's it's, a, it's great a good point. day yep and so i want to double click on something here real quick so when covid hit and mm -hmm. obviously you know y'all had to adjust and pivot in a lot of different ways but what did you notice in, in uh especially working with your customers you know, what are some things that maybe y'all took a little bit more time to, to do with your customers when you finally could open back up again? Hmm. I know that during COVID, we, you know, if, if they wanted it right then, we were going to make it happen. Right. Um, we just, I, it, when they walked through that door, once we were allowed to be opened and that what they said to us is we were thinking about you this whole time. Were yeah. you going wow. to be open? I mean, cool. we yeah. were just like, and we saw that from then until the end through Christmas. Mm -hmm. I mean, so many clients came in and said, we were really worried if you were going to make it, 
you're my favorite store. And just because we don't think like that. We're just like, what? We're people's favorite store? We just, you know, we never, (laughs) we don't think like that. So, but, um, but just to hear that, I mean, oh goodness. Yeah. It's super So what would you say? Um, I would say one of the things that we've tried to do, um, with all the COVID stuff Mm -hmm. and, and I'm going to be honest with owning a store and, and trying to manage all of that is, it's just, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a whole lot. Um, and what we've wanted to do is try to honor people's feelings Mm -hmm. and their position about it. Um, one of the things we noticed is while everything was still shut down, we were doing a lot of curbside pickup Mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. And honestly, curbside pickup. Thank you. Anyone who did that. Thank you. Thank you. You saved us for those three months. Yes. Yes. Curbside Mm -hmm. and web store. Yeah. Those things were amazing. Michelle created a web store like overnight, like for real. That's awesome. Um, And so that was incredible. It really was. It was incredible. Um, but I think when we went out to shop for the first time, um, I think we went to Marshall's and, um, and we love you Marshall's. We really <laughs> do. But oh my gosh, you did not make us want to shop. <laughs> it was so directive. Mm-hmm. Everything about it was so directive. You went in the wrong door, yeah. follow the arrows, yes. do this, do that. And it was just like, you. we got, we got yes. fussed at, we got fussed at and a, Trader Joe's. Yes. Or can we, we were, say the name? <laughs> yes, we can. Yeah. We love you Trader Joe's, but seriously, yeah. We got fussed at because we stood too close together. Yes. We rode in the car together. So it was we like, are together. Okay, ladies, yes. separate. Separate. You're not six feet apart. And, and like, we were like, what? I, you yeah. know? I, and that was not yeah, going to be. It was upsetting. Yeah. And so we did not want to <laughs> approach people that way. Yes. And what? Sorry. It was like tangent moment there. Um, yeah. We didn't want to approach like, people that yeah. way. And so when people came back to the store for the first yeah. time, our, what we've learned is our space is large enough and we, it is a boutique. So we have fewer clients shopping at yes. a time. There's no need for us to like, you know, sergeant people about what the rules are. Everyone is very aware of the rules. Yeah. And so people have been, you know, if they want to walk around in a small pack of the people that they came in the car yes. with, that's yeah. fine by us. Yeah. So we've just tried to honor if someone looks frightened we yes. try to honor that if yes. someone looks relaxed and like they want to have a party we try to honor that um because everybody feels so differently yeah. about all of this that um and and we do want people to feel like jane is their home away from home and so that's um, really cool when a client comes in we try to yeah. honor how they are approaching this mm-hmm. so what's a shift <laughs> that y'all have made during covid that you will continue to do moving forward mm. Web store. Yeah, a web store. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it was time. Yes. It's probably been time for a long time. Um, one of the problems that we have is that the we feel like Jane is very experiential. Mm-hmm. Um, we feel like it's, you know, it's a lot of hands on, it's tactical, it's, it's environmentally stimulating. And to translate that to a web store is almost impossible. And so anything that we've ever mm-hmm. done feels weird yeah it just doesn't like it it, just doesn't translate right yeah you see the product and that's one good thing that I love what we do is the way we put a piece of art or something in something you would never see in a vignette and that's so hard to translate on the web store for us and that's just something we're going to continue to work on is just to make that yeah. feel like oh this is you know this is Jane so but I feel like <clears throat> at this point our quality of product is too good mm-hmm. not to have a web store mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. so people can that see product. it all over the right. all over the United States not just in the triad yeah and North Carolina so okay. but that'll be something that we're going to continue and work on so good so <clears throat> um as you guys think about 2021 mm-hmm. um What's what's something that you're that you're thinking about for this new year for your for a game made and found? <laughs> Eric knows I don't like to talk about like the future. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, good times. Uh, like, I am the daily. What is our 2021? <laughs> we do have a few goals, but do we want to discuss those? No, so no one knows. No, yeah, there no. are a few. Like, okay, but like, for example, if any of our clients or 
are watching this February, we're going to have, well, at the end of January, we're going to have a good announcement. Yeah. Um, nice. So I think the clients will be happy about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going to continue to just, you know, look for new lines to carry mm -hmm. um, because Krish and I love, we love to find the old stuff. But at the same time, we like good new stuff, new furniture, yeah. Yeah. new art, stuff like that. And we will continue to find new clothing lines. I mean, we really want to incre increase our boutique. We know how important it is for the secondhand, the thrifted stuff, because everyone's really big about, you know, what is it called? Um, the clothing where you're not having to buy. I shouldn't embarrass myself. Like slow fashion, mm -hmm. yes. basically yes. being able gotcha. to read. Yeah, and we're that. not just, people aren't just dumping their clothes every right. time. Right. And so we've really noticed that we've always done that in our store, but that business is increasing. So we're going to increase it even more. And we're looking to find um, stylists our age that inspire us and from all yeah. over the world. So, that I mean, we cool. do have a lot of new things that we're already thinking about. And yep. so. Yeah, we're excited. Yeah. All right. So is good year. Yes. So as we sort of turn the corner and, and wrap things up in just a little bit, what, what would you say are some of the processes that y'all have in place at the at your store for somebody who is a small business owner that they need to make sure for your business to be successful, you, you need to pay attention to make sure you've got these processes in place to be successful. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think processes is something that we are looking at much more closely yes, this year. We do. Um, we actually just met with a fellow business owner mm -hmm. with a lot of process questions because mm -hmm. um, there are things that we it, we're we're at a place right now, and I think probably a lot of small businesses that made it through make it yes. through COVID or uh -huh. make it over the five year mark or whatever you come to a place where you're asking these questions of okay there are processes that I need to put in place if I'm going to go from point A to point B and if I'm going to transition business from a true mom and pop shop to a something that's a hybrid of not a big business mm -hmm. but not a small business anymore either that's good. and I think that's sort of where we're at with um, I, I think this year is sort of a turning point year for us. Um, and so looking at processes with vendors, with just how we order, uh, when yes, we the order, scheduling, the our scheduling orders, yes. how far planning, in advance we yeah, are. Planning stuff out more mm -hmm. in advance. Cause we've always been, you know, we're honestly, we're like, month to month sometimes right like, okay because yeah. we'll plan a floor set we always have ideas in the back of our mind but sometimes you know instead of planning things two or three months out we're like before a floor set we're pulling stuff to, we're like both yeah. pull, finding product painting right. product you know getting it all together so we'd like to have more minions i mean yes be honest minions about that. Would be <laughs> yeah, so you if go. you're a minion and, and you're, you're hanging out right? here your job come on yes. to us <laughs> We would love it. So, um, but yeah, I think our processes with scheduling are probably yeah. the biggest, biggest thing. It's a lot to think How about. How and when things happen. Mm -hmm. yes. So yes. I want to applaud you guys for something that y'all do a really good job of. And and I know, Carisha, you recently told me y'all did this, but y'all went and met with another business owner in the area and kind of mm -hmm. mm -hmm. learned some things from her you know, perspective who's maybe down the road, maybe a little bit further in some areas, but mm -hmm. you guys have always been very supportive of other small businesses and haven't looked at them as competition. You've looked at them as, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, we're in this together kind of thing. It's easy for people to look at others who are doing the same thing and just kind of have this little bit of a chip on their shoulder or not really let them get too close kind of a thing. You guys are so welcoming and encouraging and y'all love to be part of that small business culture what's fostered that attitude with you guys um one thing that when you say that when you ask us that it makes me think of there's a store in winston um there's a few stores but um i'll say two things one what krisha said earlier is when you find a small store that's like us they're still completely different mm -hmm. and so we all have something different to offer in the community um two there's a store in winston like i said they're called goat feathers and i just remember 
buying something from them and they were just saying, Michelle, there's always going to be enough junk to go around to all of us. <laughs> and that's what I, I think about all the time. I'm like, yeah. I think about that as stores, like, you know, and, and we love to see other businesses tag us or when, you know, when, when we turn right. 10, like mm -hmm. the coffee shop in Kernersville local roots and they just, you know, Hey, we're going to, um, you know, yeah, if your name sweet. is Jane, yeah, and so oh, just that's cool. that camaraderie. Yeah, yes, got, you like, get a free coffee, free coffee today. So anything oh. like that, it just I don't know. We love that kind of relationship because we know how hard it is to survive. But I don't. We just we we're just we we always say we're business women with really big hearts, and sometimes that gets into trouble. <laughs> but um, but yes, but yeah, yeah, I'll let you answer. But yeah, there's enough junk for all of us yeah. rather than being. I love it. You know, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, just to kind of piggyback what you said, there are, God created 7 billion mm -hmm. of us, and no two people are alike, and so the creativity that comes from each person is so different, and um, I don't know, all that to me has always been very life-giving, it doesn't seem like a threat, um, and when we were, right before we started the store, um, a store that doesn't is, is not in business anymore. Um, they really uh, spawn so much energy mm -hmm. in all of us, I think. Um, and they'll never see this, but Anna or Tracy, yes. if you are out there from retail, know, retail, yes. we absolutely <laughs> loved your store. And it was just a different version of it, I had never seen anybody do anything quite like what they had done with their space. And it was so affirming that, okay, the things that you're thinking and the things that you're wanting to do in business, those are, those instincts are good. Those mm -hmm. instincts, if you flush them out, they sort of look like this, but they look like your version of this. And so I think that's always been really inspiring. Um, just to know that everybody can put a little bit different spin on their creativity and it feels like a different experience for clients. I love it. I love the, just the mentality of abundance and not scarcity and, mm -hmm. uh, and just, you know, we're, we, we can all add value. So, so if folks wanted to get in touch with y'all and just ask you some further questions or maybe get some ideas or maybe even meet with you and talk with you further, how should they contact you? Through our Instagram, yes. probably just direct messages, mm -hmm. Jane Maiden found send us a message we answer within 24 hours sometimes within minutes so, yes. yeah usually within minutes. <laughs> yeah within minutes <laughs> that's awesome all right so any any final advice uh for either of you before we go hmm just have um, fun, be happy. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, relax. Relax. I would yes. say get a lot of yeah. get a lot of input um, when you're starting a business mm -hmm. and get a lot of input from a lot of different sources. Like yes. I know for me, um, I can remember being on the Damascus bike trail of <laughs> all places in Damascus, Virginia, and asking my mom you know, a billion questions. And we were, you know, trying to decide if we were going to open the store, not open the store. What are we doing? You know, we, the idea is out there. And, um, and I got a lot of really good feedback from her. Um, there was a lot of great feedback from all of the vendors that were part of what was going on. There was excellent feedback from you. And that's one of the things I think not to like suck up here because, you know, <laughs> you're my hubs. But, um, but I think one of the things that I've learned from watching you mm -hmm. is anytime you're going to make a big decision, always get input feedback mm -hmm. and get it from a variety of different people. And so I don't know if you're kicking the tires of mm -hmm. small business, that would be mm -hmm. advice. Yes. If you're thinking about giving up, that would be the advice. If you're thinking about getting blowing up, mm -hmm. that would be the advice. <laughs> um, it's always good. to get feedback. That's yeah, good. I totally agree. 
Well, Carisha Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today on my tips for small business. I appreciate you guys and what y'all have been able to accomplish after 10 years in business. That is significant. And a lot of people don't get to where you're at. So I wanted y'all to be able to share your wisdom and your creativity with others that are watching. Y'all, thank you so much for being here and being with us. And y'all, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.